on the zoo. A day in the life of the zoo's greatest grandmother. Giraffe Jelani gets his sea legs and Auckland zookeepers help rescue wild birds from an environmental disaster. As day breaks at Auckland Zoo, animals of every stripe wake to welcome another sunny morning. One of the animals has been greeting visitors for longer than anyone else, 58-year-old chimpanzee Janie. Christine Tittinger is one of Janie's devoted keepers. I always wanted to work in a zoo. I always wanted to work with exotic animals. Right from, say, the, my last year at school, and then a couple of years later, I was able to get a job here. Been here ever since. Janie adores all her keepers, but after 32 years of companionship, she has an extra special bond with Christine. We decided that for Janie's sake, we would have one keeper that was with her all the time. So she, because of her um, upbringing and what is required of her, she's the only animal in the zoo that has one keeper. Janie's different to all the other residents at Auckland Zoo. She was one of the original tea party chimps that came from London in the 50s. It's a world away from how the zoo cares for its animals today. Tea Party companions Bobby and Josie passed away about eight years ago, but Janie opted to stay in the family home. Her enclosure seems at odds with the zoo's many naturally planted open spaces, but it's where she feels comfortable, so it's been left that way. Ah, good morning. Good morning. Christine and Janie's day starts at 8 a.m. Good morning, Janie. Good morning, Janie girl. Just put this down. Just... It's lovely that you get greeted like this every morning, you know. She doesn't question you, she just... Ah, oh, good morning, Christine, and it's sort of so lovely. Good morning, Janie. Good morning, Janie. I'll just turn your light on. Turn your light on. Good morning. I'm just going to clean, OK? I can see your eye. I can see your little eye. Yes, I can. I can see you watching me. As you can see, there is nothing natural about this enclosure. This is old school zoo. This is what Janie and the Tea Party chimps were used to. Many years ago, we did actually try and um, integrate Janie when Bobby and Josie were still here with Mother Ray's chimps, and they had a more naturalistic enclosure, and they did not like it at all. This is what Janie loves. This is Janie's life, and so we are giving what Janie wants. Breakfast is a chance for Christine to set Janie a few challenges. People often bring in bags, umbrellas and containers that we can then just put food in and just... It's amazing what you can do when you think outside the square. While Janie has happily insisted on not moving with the times... Oh, what's in there? There's one modern acquisition she's proud to show off. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. You're OK. The phone is her security blanket. She keeps it between her thigh and her big fat puku. <laughs> and it goes everywhere with her. Ooh, what's in there, miss? A lot of our day is spent just sitting there and being her companion. What's this little foot doing? What's this toe doing here? Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. And quite often I'll sit with her and she'll disappear down the other end of her enclosure or she'll be getting on with stuff, but um, she knows I'm there. Janie's on the best plan ever and Christine's plans for the rest of her day are just as good. Whilst Janie enjoys her sedate lifestyle, the zoo's youngest giraffe, Jelani, is all at sea. He's heading to his new home at Werribee Zoo in Australia. Jelani's first mate is Keeper Nat, and zoo vet Craig is also on board to ensure this five-day crossing goes smoothly. Stress is the main worry for Nat, and the first sign is loss of appetite. He's had some food this morning, which is really encouraging. Very pleased about that. And it doesn't look like he's um, sat down at, at all overnight, but he's looking OK. You know, he's not pacing. There's, um, there's no sign that he's done any um, damage to himself overnight, so he hasn't kicked out or done anything. The seas are really calm, which is nice, so I think everyone's got their sea legs. And uh, we're just about to come around the, the tip of the top of New Zealand, so beautiful morning. 
and um, hopefully we'll get Jelani eating a lot more today. Uh, Jelani's come through the night really well again. He's eaten most of his food overnight, the stuff that we left him out there. Again, there's, there's no signs of him being um, particularly stressed or, or any damage to himself, so I think he's coping remarkably well. Craig and I have got no seasickness, which is which is really good as well. As yet, there's there's no signs that there's going to be any rough seas, so uh, fingers crossed it's going to stay like this. But just when Jelani's big adventure begins looking like a South Seas cruise, conditions start to turn. Uh, Jelani's gone off his food a little bit this morning. He hasn't really wanted to eat much, but the good thing is that he's now been sitting down for about an hour. So this is the first time I've actually seen him have a sit down and take some of the weight off his legs. So that's really good. Australia. We can, um, just on the horizon we can see land and um, thankfully it's all coming to an end. Overall I think um, you know, this trip has gone a lot better than anyone could have expected. As far as Jelani's concerned I, I think it couldn't have been any better for him. It's only the second leg for this long-legged youngster. Once they dock, Jelani still has to settle into Melbourne's Werribee Open Range Zoo. Back on dry land, Auckland Zoo's iconic little blue penguins are cruising the calmer waters of the coast. They're colourful characters, and Keeper Natalie knows how each and every one ticks. One of our penguins, Coral, who's been here the longest, she definitely believes that she's the boss of the penguin enclosure and the rest of the penguins. You can just her demeanour when she walks around and the vocalisations, and it's just really entertaining to watch. My favourite thing about working here is definitely getting to work with some of New Zealand's rarest species and also to be involved in directly impacting their conservation out in the wild. Most of the group of blue penguins we have here at Auckland Zoo all come from a wild background. They've been rescued for various reasons. Uh, two of them are missing flippers, so we think they may have got hit by a boat out in the wild. They had huge injuries to their flippers, which meant they had to be amputated. So we're really familiar with the problems that penguins face and the, the needs that they have. Even here in clean green New Zealand, pollution is claiming the lives of penguins and many other seabirds. When they get covered in oil, it ruins their waterproofing on their feathers, which means that the water gets right down to their skin and they get extremely cold. And that has huge consequences on their health and their ability to survive. Not far from the hustle and bustle of downtown Auckland, the country's wildest playground is in full swing. For 58-year-old Janie's morning, Christine has arranged some less physical entertainment. Janie's younger years were way back in the 1950s, when the treatment of chimpanzees was a far cry from modern zoo style. One of her favourite things is watching wait, telly. Just wait. A lot of the stuff we give her is quite humanistic. The television is something that we can actually play DVDs on, and she actually is very interested. What I've got here is a disc of the old Tea Party chimp footage. Hey, let's give it a whirl. Jane. Oh, Will this spark any memories for Janie? Can you see? So this is how zoos were then, you know. London Zoo, some of the zoos in Australasia and Auckland Zoo were all part of that. I know a lot of us here wouldn't have anything to do with the zoo that um, thought that that was okay to do to their animals. It's almost like another world. They're trying to make them like little humans, you know, so, yeah. 
But that was 50 years ago. Modern zoos feature natural habitats with an emphasis on conservation, which extends to work in the field. Like in Tauranga, where Natalie's helping the penguins and other seabirds affected by the Rena oil spill. 60 incredibly rare New Zealand dotterel have been rescued from the heavily oiled coastline and moved to the specialist wildlife response unit. Today, Natalie's heading to the beach on a special mission. Some gloves or... Yeah, yeah, just some gloves on. Yeah. To ensure these dainty dotterels have an aviary environment just like the real thing, Natalie's team are on detail to find all their usual home comforts from the affected shoreline. So that's just an example of the oil they're finding. It's extremely important that as we're collecting these shells up that we check them really thoroughly because it's really important that we don't take back any oily shells back to the dotterels and contaminate them and have to stress them out by putting them through the wash process. Yeah, that will dot like that. Yeah. Getting good collection. I'm finding a lot with oil on them though. I've got little spots of oil on my hands now, which is pretty scary to see. The Rena disaster had the potential to wipe out 10% of the entire world's dotterel population. Our New Zealand species are incredibly important to us and incredibly unique. It is very heartwarming that there's so many people that are willing to help the wildlife. So everyone pulling together and doing the best for the animals is, yeah, it's really inspiring to see. Back at the Oiled Wildlife Response Unit, the Dotterels aviary makeover is underway. They're known to be really flighty and really nervous birds, so we keep our movements nice and slow and steady and our voices nice and quiet. This is an empty aviary that we're just going to set up for another Dotterel to move into. They can develop foot problems in captivity, so we're going to give them this nice bits of driftwood and bits of shell and things like that to give them different substrates to walk on. With the dotterel's habitat sorted, Natalie checks up on the little blue penguins. All of the birds that you can see right now will have come into the centre with some amount of oil. At this stage, they're waterproofing. You can see it's starting to return. But what they need to complete that waterproofing process is for them to preen themselves and use their natural oils. They've got a preening gland at the base of their tail, and you really want them preening and moving that oil back through their feathers for the waterproofing to return. And what that actually does is knits all the feathers back together again. The feathers have each got little individual hooks that they hook together, and that makes them waterproof. In a situation like this, it's not ideal to be holding wild penguins and man-made swimming pools, but we know it's only a temporary measure and that they are going to be returned to the wild. So, best solution for a worst-case scenario, really. With so much to do here on the coast, Natalie and the response team have their hands full for a few days. Back in Auckland, while Christine can't change Janie's tea party past, she can make sure her life now is fulfilling and fun. Part of Janie's enrichment is quite often getting animals that, you know, usually go for a walk around the zoo to come and actually visit her. So we've got the pig today. <laughs> right. Hello, Janie. Who's this come to visit? It's just a piggy. It's just a little piggy. Well, it's a big piggy, but... A lovely piggy. It's a lovely piggy, Jane. What's the piggy eating, Jane? What's the piggy eating? Ooh. Where are you going, Missy? I hope she's not going to get a stick. Sometimes she might give him a little bit of a poke with a stick. She's just saying, you know, don't come too near. You know, that's lovely piggy. Oh, lovely piggy. Let's just hold that piggy's tail. I'm keeping the tail out of the way because there's a slight gap under the door. And if she wanted to, she could get out and reach. But Hayley's watching the pig, and I'm watching the tail with a, and a quarter of my eye watching Janie. We try and enrich Janie every which way. And that includes food, which is next on Janie's agenda. Afternoon siestas in summer are standard practice for many zoo animals. Mother giraffe Rakia is also relaxed about her son Jelani leaving the nest. He's now roaming the wide open pastures of Werribee Zoo in Melbourne, Australia. 
Delani has spent a little bit of time in quarantine before he moved down to our African savannah to meet his six new housemates, our other bachelor boys. The bachelor pad itself is a 40 hectare spread to share with his new herd and other exotic animals. Jelani's settled in quite well here at Werribee Zoo. Uh, he has, this is Jelani here. He's got uh, six new mates. Um, he's the second youngest, but he's definitely uh, not the second bottom in the hierarchy chain, that's for sure. He's made his uh, presence felt. The other boys are always uh, know where he is. Jelani has quite a strong personality. He's definitely very demanding and very pushy uh, at feed time, but he's also quite bold, so he's not too, too scared to uh, hang around with the other boys and uh, definitely hold his own with them. Jelani's taken it all in his stride, leaving mum, sailing the Tasman, two trips on a truck and now forging new friendships. So what do the keepers back in Auckland think of Jelani's progress now he's with a new herd? There he is, first into the food. Look at him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he still looks the same though, doesn't he? His whole yeah. face shape mm. is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Horns are a bit, a bit sort of longer. Yeah. And yeah. It's really nice to see Jelani fitting in with everyone else. I mean, when I left him, he was in solitary confinement, you know, and still in quarantine and, and hadn't met anyone else. So it's just really nice to see him out in, in such a big enclosure and, um, and doing what giraffes do best. And, you know, he, he's just hanging out with his mates and, and eating. <laughs> <laughs> Janie's another who likes her food, and Christine's preparing a late afternoon challenge. Basically, I've got some salmon here, which is actually part of your diet. And um, what I'm doing is just shoving it into the open pine cone and then she has to get it out. Hopefully she will get a tool, a stick or something, to get all the little skewicks right down in the middle. Chimpanzees are sophisticated tool users. And this pine cone puzzle keeps Janie's mind sharp. Oh, is that nice? Nice salmon. Right behind you, Jane, right behind you. That's it. In her mind, there's an exact tool that she requires, and she might have to break it off and um, flatten it or make it longer or whatever. People often say, how long is she going to live for? And they go, how long is a piece of string? Other um, chimps in zoos have lived till 60, 65, even 70. So um, I, it's very hard when people ask how long she's going to last. But obviously, she is an elderly animal. And so um, she's sort of in retirement here. Like many senior citizens, Janie prefers things to remain as they've always been. So this is Janie's little private world. Um, this is an area that she can come to when, um, when she comes through there, the public can't see her. We've tried to um, decorate it and still stimulate in here as well. So that's why all around the walls there are um, old calendar pictures and just obviously pictures of our animals and other animals and just familiar things that make her content and happy. Mm. So this is the end of the day for her. But she just wants me to shut the door, put the bird out and go home. Okay. I don't think there's anything in there, Jane. So I come here, I just sort of have a look, have a chat. And then I go, when I go, right, OK, you've found something to eat, I then catch your eye, say goodbye. Janie, I'll see you later. I'll see you tomorrow. No night. So I've seen a lot of change in the zoo. The animals that have come and gone, the people, the attitudes, the environment. But the one thing that's been constant <laughs> is Janie here. But the day Janie is no longer at the zoo is one that Christine doesn't look forward to. He's old, and that day will come, 
and that day will come in my lifetime here at the zoo. And I'm not looking forward to that. The zoo is not looking forward to that, but it's a reality that death comes to us all. I tend to not think of the what-ifs, because I get very upset, as you can see. So just appreciate her and say goodnight, and she'll be here tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.